Hello and welcome back to the course on Power BI. Today we're starting a brand new section and we're talking about long-term unemployment statistics in the US and we're going to learn how to build stacked area charts. Going to be an exciting section ahead. Let's dive straight into it. All right, the first thing we're going to need is a browser. We're going to need to go to www.superdatascience.com slash Power BI. And here, if you scroll down to the bottom or not to the bottom to uh, section number three, time series aggregation and filters. Uh, here, we're going to be able to download the data set. So go ahead and click on that long-term unemployment statistics. Um, yeah, so the focus of this section is actually going to be also time series data and we're going to learn a lot about aggregation. So quite a lot of things that we're going to cover off in this section of the course. All right, so once the file is downloaded, let's have a look at uh, what we can see inside. So there it is. And here you'll see an interesting formatting of the file. You'll see that we've got age groups and bear in mind, so age is not a numeric variable here. It's a categorical variable. So we've already, they've already been grouped for us. And if you scroll down, you'll see that they repeat themselves. So they tend to repeat themselves. And why is that? Well, that is because of the way this uh, file is structured. Uh, so in the first column, you've got age groups, right? So 16 to 19, 20, 24, 25, 34, 35, 44, 45, 54, 55, 64, 65, and over. So that's a total of seven age groups. And then they just continuously repeat themselves. And that is because uh, here we've got all the age groups for men, then we've got them for women. But then again, men repeat themselves and women repeat themselves. And why is that? Well, that is because here we've got January 2005, Right, so we've got first we're looking at January 2005 at all um, uh, the male uh, so at the male segment, and then we're looking at the different age groups. Then we're looking at January 2005 at the female segment, and then at all of the age groups. And then we're moving on to February 2005, the next month. Again, we need to look at the uh, male segment and all of the age groups there. Then we look at the female uh, February 2005 female segment and all of the age groups there. And for every single iteration that we do, we've got a number of unemployed people in that specific segment. So for example, in um, let's have a look here. In January 2005, in the male segment, in the age group 35, 35 to 44, there were 20, um, two, there were 201,000 unemployed people in that specific segment. And so it just goes on like that. Uh, so there's, we're still 2005, now it's 2006, and so on, so on, so on, all the way to 2015, right? So uh, we go up to February 2015. So the question is, why is it so, uh, like, structure, why is the data structured in such an interesting and inhuman way? And the answer is in the question itself. It's because uh, this data is prepared for machines. It's prepared for the computer to process it uh, quickly and efficiently. And it is very different indeed to what humans are used to. So as humans, we'd be more used to something like this. So here I've got a picture of an Excel sheet. Um, and this is what we'd be used to, right? We'd be used to having um, age on the left here. This is one of the ways we would have structured it as humans. On age on the left here, then you've got um, your months, January, February, and so on. And then within each month, you've got two segments, uh, males, females, so men, women, men, women. And so if you need to look up, for instance, quickly, uh, September 2005, 45 to 54 years old, you'd go on the top, you'd look very quickly. All right, September 2005, and let's say you need the female segment. Um, so there it is. And then you look over here, 45 to 54 years old. So that's, that's the third one from the bottom, September 2005, there we go. 152,000 unemployed, right? So it's much quicker, much easier, and very visual to uh, work with this data. But the thing is, machines aren't visual. They don't need this visual aid for them. It's much easier to work like this. And for a machine, it'd be much quicker to um, analyze this and it would find uh, the results faster than we would in this, much faster than we would in this type of format. And so, uh, even though we are not used to this, this is the correct format for uh, the machines uh, or for a computer, I keep saying machines, uh, like we're in some sort of movie. Um, it's the correct format for the computer or for Power BI to quickly process this data. All right, so uh, we've uh, quite closely 
learned about this uh, data set. Now let's go ahead and import it into Power BI. Uh, here's a blank fresh workbook. Let's click get data. Uh, this is an Excel file and there it is. Oh, nope, that's not it. It's in section three. Uh, let's give it a second. So again, you can, uh, so here you can see a couple of sheets. These are empty, right? So this is the one we want. Checkbox here, click load and give it a second to load. All right, so there we go. The data set is on the left. You can just make sure, confirm that everything's good here. So 1,708 rows, and uh, you can always just go and check that that is the correct number. So if you go to the bottom here, you got 1,709 minus the header, which is row number one, makes it 1,708 rows as we can see here. It's always good to confirm that we loaded the right number of rows. All right, so that's how we load this data into our uh, visualization. And uh, starting from the next tutorial, we're going to start visualizing um, the data set and deriving insights about actual unemployment numbers in the US. It's gonna be exciting. I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial and until then, happy analyzing.